Hi, I'm Mubanga, and in this video, I'm gonna take a little break from my Mini Worlds project to work on something else for a bit. I've been working on it for a couple of months, and I could use a palette cleanser. So I had a couple of requirements for this project. Number one, it should run on my Quest 2 standalone, so I can easily take it with me and show it to my family or friends. In that same vein, it shouldn't be too complicated to pick up and play. And finally, I should be able to make it in about a week. When I was looking through all my old projects for the first video of this channel, I came across this maze prototype I made like 5 years ago. It's fun, but also kinda easy, because you can see the whole maze all at once. But I do think this has a lot of potential in VR, where you actually have to wander through the maze to find your way out. So I scoped out everything that I would need to do to make this project work. This would include 3D modeling, generating the maze, spawning the models in the maze, making help items so that the player can find their way around the maze a little bit easier, uh, doing the sounds and the music, and making a user interface. The old code that generated the maze works fine, but it was pretty messy and not really up to my current code standards. So I kept the same principle, but rewrote it. It works as follows. We pick a random position to start. For me, that will always be somewhere in the left column. And then we go to the following loop. We shuffle all the directions we can go, and we pick the first one in the list. Then we look at the cell that's two away in that direction. If it's already open, or we cannot go there because it's on the edge, we look at the next direction in the list. If it was not already walkable, we set it and the cell in between to be walkable. We do this recursively, so we do the same thing at the cell we just visited, each time shuffling the directions. At some point, we will reach a cell that has no possible steps to take. In this case, we go back to the previous cell and look at its next direction. This creates a T-junction. We keep doing this until there's no more steps to take in any of the cells. We then have a pretty good looking maze, but we could make it a little bit more interesting by making some more cells randomly walkable to create some loops and cross junctions. I thought it would be cool to have this sci-fi space corridor look, so I fired a blender grabbed some references from Pinterest, and started modeling. At first I created this clinical, white, shiny, futuristic space corridor, which looks really nice in Blender, but considering I wanted this game to run on the Oculus Quest 2, I couldn't get the reflections to work right in Unity. So after messing with reflection probes for about an hour, I decided this look wouldn't work for me. The next day when I came back, I decided to go for a totally different vibe, a more darker, heavy, industrial look, I think it looks pretty awesome in Blender, and compared to my first attempt, works a lot better in Unity as well. So I proceeded to create a variety of different wall pieces, ceilings, and floor tiles. To build and place everything, I wrote a little script that spawns cell objects, which are the walkable tiles in our maze. Each cell then figures out what shape it is by looking at its neighbors. If it only has one neighbor, it's an end piece. If it has three neighbors, it's a T-junction. If it has four neighbors, it's a cross-section. And if it has two neighbors, it could either be a straight piece or a corner. It then figures out its orientation by trying to see if it fits. And if it doesn't, it will rotate 90 degrees until it does. So for corners, T-junctions and crossings, I can then simply instantiate any models that I need. But for straight pieces, I need to take a different approach. You see, my walls and corners are not actually inside the cell, they are just outside the edge of it. This means that straight walls that are next to a corner should be a little bit shorter than normal. To achieve this, I decided to look at each wall for a straight piece individually. So first, I check to see if it needs a wall, and if it does, I check both its neighbors to see if their corners, T-junctions or crossings in a certain orientation that would require the wall to be shorter. If it only has one such neighbor, it gets a short wall, if it has two, it gets a super short wall, and otherwise it just gets a normal wall. Each cell has four floor tiles. I've created two variations of floor tiles, one with a light and one without, and I randomly spawn either of the two. If it has a light, I rotate it in a random orientation to give a little bit more variation and distinct points. So 
Speaking of distinct points, the goal of a maze is obviously to get lost, but I don't want it to get too hard, especially in VR when it's pretty easy to get turned around anyway. So to remedy this a bit, I give each corner of the maze its own color, and then I blend the colors of the accent lights between these colors based on their position. This way, it becomes a bit easier for the player to keep track of where they've been. Plus, it has the added benefit of looking really cool. Unlike my Mini Worlds project that I'm working on, this is a perfect use case for the Unity XR rig. So I just dropped it in, added some teleportation area scripts to the floors, and it was off and running. I spruced up the visuals of the teleportation line and the reticle a little bit, and added snap turning to the joystick controls. I then quickly realized I was able to teleport through walls, which kind of defeats the purpose of a maze, but this was easily fixed by adding some box colliders. I modeled an end goal in Blender and gave it a shader to make it look nice. So now there's an actual goal, instead of aimlessly running around. To place it and the starting point of the player in an interesting position, I decided to look for the longest possible route. To do that, I look at all the dead ends in my maze, and then for each of those I use the Dijkstra algorithm to find the farthest possible point. I store all of those routes and find the longest one and set the player position and the end goal at either end of that route. Using A-star would have been much more performant, but I chose for the Dijkstra algorithm because A-star is not going to work in my Mini Worlds project, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to explore it a little bit more. I recorded the whole explanation of how the Dijkstra algorithm worked, but it slowed down this video a bit too much. I will get back to pathfinding once we reach that point in the Mini Worlds project. Now that I had an actual game, I showed it to my friends, and I pretty much got the response I expected. It's pretty difficult to find your way around, especially in the bigger mazes. Luckily I planned for this in the form of help items. These are three different types of displays that will attach to your controller, that will help you find your way through the maze. These can be found at dead ends. So once you reach a dead end, it's not that much of a bummer, because at least you found something to help you find your way out. I modeled a controller and some detachable screens inspired by sci-fi guns and handheld utility items, such as a radar or like medical syringe pliers. The first item is a small screen with an arrow that will always point towards the goal. It will attach to your left controller once you pick it up. I made an arrow sprite and attached it to a UI canvas. I then did a little bit of vector math to figure out which way it should be pointing. The other item on the left controller is a little display that shows you how far you are away from the goal. Implementing this was also pretty trivial. I just get the two points, figure out the distance and display it on the screen. As a little extra hint, I color both these screens in the same color as the cell where the end goal is at. The final item will attach to the right controller. It's a minimap that helps the player with their orientation and to a lesser extent with the layout of the maze. Implementing this was a little bit more involved. I spawn a quad for each walkable cell in the maze and give it the same color as its accent light. I reused the sprite of the arrow as a player indicator and gave it a little bit of code to rotate with the controller. I created a camera that follows the player's position but always looks down. It only renders the quads and the sprites against a dark background. This camera outputs to a render texture that is attached to the material of the Minimap's display model. A couple of years ago, I picked up a sound pack with 5000 sounds that served me pretty well. So for when you teleport and rotate, I picked a couple of swoosh sounds, a background noise loop for a little bit of atmosphere, a loop for the items that you can pick up, so that you can hear them before you see them. And in the same vein, a loop for the exit. I also found this voiceover saying begin and complete it. Completed. I'm always amazed about how much a couple of sounds can make a game come to life. 
Even more so in VR, where you can hear in 3D space. I created a piece of music in Ableton. I actually had to start over a couple of times, because the industrial sci-fi look made me want to make some heavy doom kind of music. But this game should be a good first time VR experience for a wide range of audiences and I don't want it to get too intense. So I channeled the puzzle game vibe and came up with the music you've been listening to this whole video. Now I was pretty much done, but I had the nagging feeling I was missing something. And then I realized it. Every corridor in every sci-fi piece has these diagonally split doors. So I modeled the door in Blender, added it to the game and wrote a bit of logic to open and close it. Each straight cell has a 1 in 20 chance to spawn one of these and it should help the players orient themselves a little bit better. It was a close call, but Crisis averted. Even though the game is pretty straightforward, you just teleport, rotate and find your way to the exit. I still made a little tutorial level, so it's super easy to start up the game, give it to somebody else and they can figure it out on their own from there. I created the user interface and I want to make it as complete as possible. Because at this point, I was also about to work on the UI of the Mini Worlds game and thought this would be good practice. So I created the settings menu where you can change all the sound levels individually and switch to a left-handed mode. I created a panel where you can generate a new maze, either from a preset or by using the sliders to set the custom width and length. And you can also turn on and off the help items. I also created an end screen for when you finish the maze that displays your time and the maze characteristics. And if for whatever strange reason you ever want to stop playing the game, I made a quit button. So now the very last thing to do is to optimize it a little bit so it runs better on the Quest 2. For post-processing, I bought an asset from the asset store called Beautify2 that's more suited to do mobile VR post-processing. I also added the level of detail system. This means you're looking at the different model depending on how big it is on the screen. So if you're close to a model, it has more detail, and if you're farther away from it, it gets swapped with one that has less detail. This meant I had to open up Blender one last time and create a new model with a lower detail for every single model that I already had. I thought this would be pretty tedious, but actually it was pretty satisfying to do, so I decided to create a third set with even less detail. So now that all of this is implemented, you can have pretty big mazes without too much of a frame rate drop on a Quest 2. It's not quite the 72 frames a second that you need to get in the Oculus Store, but it's still somewhere in the high 50s, so very playable all in all. And I wasn't really planning on doing an official release anyway. If you want to try it for yourself, you can get the APK or a Windows build from my itch.io page. I will put the link in the description. So yeah, now I finally have something that I can take with me and show people when I tell them I make VR games. Like my parents over here. I think I reached most of the goals I set for myself when I started this project. It's fun to play and easy to pick up. It runs alright on the Quest. And it took me a little bit over a week to make and polish. Also, my palette is cleansed and I'm more than ever motivated to continue work on my Mini Worlds project. If you haven't already checked it out, I will leave a link to the playlist in the description. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Oh, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it helps a lot. Bye bye!